It's Ashley Cunningham here, and I am really, really excited to be channeling Lord Shiva tonight. Um, I had a really amazing experience with him in the Mediumship for Beginners course with Kristen Davies, and uh, it was really awesome. I was doing a practice session, and someone, hey, Sheena, thanks for joining. Uh, someone, I think it might have actually been Sheena. Um, I can't remember exactly how it came about, but um, someone had requested a, um, a channeling of Lord Shiva and I called him in. I'd never channeled him before and he was amazing and super awesome to connect with. And I've been really excited to connect with him again in a more formal setting like tonight. Um, and I actually just did a really cool meditation with him right before this. So I am like in it to win it. I think it's going to be really great. And he's hanging out right here on my left. Um, thank you all for joining. I'm super, super um, excited that so many of you a have expressed interest in hearing from Lord Shiva and have a lot of questions. So I think tonight's going to be a great night. And again, thank you guys so much um, for joining me. And Sheila, hey, oh yeah, she's she is confirming. Sheila's confirming that Sheena did request it before, and it was magical. Um, I remember uh, he's really he comes in really really clear for me, and uh, his voice is like very dark, um, but like really calming and warm. And I remember um, trying to describe it for the students I was working with and uh, the phrase midnight honey came to mind. <laughs> and it was so great. And I, I still stand by that description and he's just smiling at me at this time. Um, and I think he's ready to go. So uh, I see, please post your questions as he channels his um, message. And we will get right to those as soon as he has shared his message. And then, yeah, we'll just get a, get going on it. So he's saying, so, dear one. <laughs> um, he's bowing and saying it is an honor to speak to each of you tonight through this dear one here at this time. Uh, there are many things that I wish to discuss with you. Uh, many will be touched on in the questions that you may have for me. But ultimately, I wish at this time to highlight the perfect opportunity that we have as hu humans, us humans have, uh, to go within to assess our vibrational frequency and change it if we so choose. I am the God, you can call me the Lord, the God, uh, the, the energy that um, surrounds the practice of meditation, the art, he's saying the art of yoga, the balance of energy in the physical body, with our emotional body, our mental body, our spiritual body is something great to achieve and something that we should strive for in this time. That alignment within us will not only bring about a, a great flowing of energy, we will be in balance, um, we will also be able to help more people around us by anchoring in a great uh, increase in light energy, that frequency, the light of source, love and light energy. And we will be in um, our, he's saying, we will be in our power when we can bring those things into alignment. And as soon as you decide to do so, your team, myself, 
any and all of spirit that you wish to work with will move, he's saying heaven and earth, uh, we will, they will move um, and all, he's, he's kind of using a lot of like um, metaphors here, like all hands on deck, he, he'll move heaven and earth, our teams will uh, dig in, uh, everyone is going to be on call for this one. <laughs> They're going to try and help you as much as possible because ultimately this is not only a means of furthering our ascension, um, but also it is a means of perfect health, uh, radiant, amazing health here on earth in this, in this uh, here and now, this moment. And it also allows you to... Um, have that stability in your energy to move forward and shine brighter and help more people as many of you are called to do in um, whatever your passions are, your creative passions and uh, what makes your heart sing. He's showing um, uh, my heart chakra actually in my mind's eye. Um, he's showing it expanding as I come into more growing bigger and shining out even more. And he can, he's saying this can uh, be done for each of us humans, each of us in our turn. And all we have to do is decide that this is something that we want to do as it is our choice. He um, holds both meditation and yoga as a great tradition. Um, there are many forms of physical exercise and um, inner exercise he's pointing within as well. Um, so going within and seeing what really resonates with you. But if you wish to work with Lord Shiva, he is saying he would love to help um, uh, each of you have a lovely, beautiful, blessed experience um, with the meditation um, that he would like to lead each of us in and also um, to try yoga and however that feels for you. Uh, he actually, I, I mentioned before that I had um, sat down uh, about half an hour before I hopped on here uh, to do a meditation with him because I knew I wanted to like really get in it um, to channel for you guys. And he sat right in front of me and he actually walked me through my entire meditation and it was beautiful and really calming and relaxing. And he came in really clear and um, he's saying he wishes to do that for each of you. Call me in. Try it out if you so choose. If you have, and he's saying all types of meditation are um, a good thing to strive for and experience. Um, but if you wish to uh, be led in a meditation by Lord Shiva, uh, he is ready to do so. He's uh, now turning to um, looking at for us here. Um, in the world, wherever you're at in the world, um, the rest of 2020, he's showing 2020, he's showing me a calendar and I'm asking him now, what does that mean? What does he want to speak on uh, for 2020? You have heard many um, uh, voices speak out uh, on the days to come. And he is going to, he's saying, add his voice to the chorus. He wishes for each of you to hold your inner strength, your inner peace as the sanctuary and ultimate, um, your ultimate priority for yourself, for your love and self-care. Holding this inner sanctuary, this inner sanctum within you and turning inward when you um, are faced with the challenges or the changes that may be coming in, in the future in 2020. Um, this will help you uh, stay, um, he's saying like, he's showing me a boat and it's like staying righted. Like you're, you're going to be going with the flow, staying within or, or being able to go within and 
um, really have a peace within. And um, I'm asking him now if he can speak on how we maintain that peace within ourselves and our inner core. And uh, he's saying, yes, going within is going to keep you righted as you as we all move forward at this time. Um, but I'm asking him, how do we maintain that peace? He's saying there have been there are many techniques a lot of you have heard of, um, but he's going to count through them. Um, definitely focusing on higher vibrational frequency, material content, things that we consume in this digital age saying um, it may be necessary to tune into the news or watch broadcasts that speak about current events. But outside of that necessary information, um, shutting out or discarding additional opinions um, and uh, frequencies may be necessary. So negating that with uh, consuming content that makes you laugh, makes you happier, makes you more comfortable. Maybe it's spiritual material. Maybe it's a funny uh, show or cartoon or something that just makes you remember your childhood and, and the feeling of just being carefree and having a good time and really enjoying the moment. Saying all of these are good things to do. Um, also maintaining a diet that will keep you grounded, uh, keep you vibrant. And he's showing, um, I've seen this a few times and it's really interesting. He's showing like fruits and vegetables and, and dishes and foods that um, when you see them with your mind's eye, they're going to be surrounded in beautiful golden energy and that's vibrant life source energy. And so he's highlighting that eating foods that are full of this life source energy is going to be essential. So that's going to be really fresh fruits and vegetables and um, meals that aren't super processed. Um, but of course, eating fruits and vegetables in any form is better than eating heavily processed foods. So maintaining a good balance. And now he's turning to meditation, going within, um, taking the time to sit in stillness and see what comes up for you. This is a really great space to um, have a lot of healing take place. Um, maybe old, he's showing me like old memory memories coming up and being released at this time. So a lot of healing, releasing can take place. And uh, he's also saying like soul searching can take place. At, and he's showing like looking around <laughs> soul searching, if you want to call it that. So asking questions of your team, really getting um, guidance in the space um, and turning to yourself and really feeling what is right for you and what resonates for you as you navigate um, the rest of 2020 is going to be essential. Um, he's also saying nature, of course, is going to help you maintain your inner sanctuary. When you go out into nature, you're grounding and um, it gets you into a really positive space and it just relaxes you. And um, he's kind of pointing to something that just popped into my head for myself. When I'm out in nature, I just feel like I'm one of the, you know, billions of beings that uh, get to experience this place and in this moment. And um, just mar I always just end up marveling at how amazing the nature is around me and the trees and the grass that I'm sitting in and and um, how I'm connected and I'm in, I'm a part of that in that moment. And it's just really humbling and super comforting for me. Um, he's he's kind of highlighting that feeling that energy is, is really essential for keeping your physical vessel and your spiritual body and your emotional and mental body um, calm and in alignment um, and keeping it relaxed and <laughs> really, really helps. And um, he's saying that there are many other things. He's going to turn now to uh, questions at this time, but he wants to highlight that um, moving forward, we will be faced with a lot of change. That's not a surprise to any of you. And um, as we go with the flow and as we're checking in, um, just remember that uh, you are a being of love and light energy 
and uh, he's now smiling and saying, and I will be there whenever you call. So if you want to call him in and you just want to have a chat with him or ask him for guidance or ask him to help you in your meditations um, and help you maintain a stillness, his energy is so calming. And um, as I was saying before, his voice is so like deep and makes me want to go to sleep almost <laughs> because it's so relaxing. That midnight honey vibe is how I feel him. And uh, it's just so beautiful. And he's, he's vibrant and full of uh, love and light, um, but also very soothing. So um, connecting with him uh, is definitely something I highly recommend. And he's saying whenever and if you resonate, uh, I will be there. And he will, uh, he's saying he will uh, shadow and be with you and support your team um, in anything that needs um, to be done. So he's, he's just extending that offer to all of you. And now he's ready to take questions. And I'm seeing a ton of awesome comments here. So I do apologize. I'm going to scroll up to see if I can get to the first questions here. Sheila is asking, could Lord Shiva tell me if I am a blue being? This is the reason he has worked with me lately. And Archangel Michael is has been around. Also, he uh, she's very attracted to Lord El Moira um, because they all form part of the blue being family group. Thank you. Uh, he's saying, Sheila, you have had many experiences as a uh, blue being of light. And he's pointing to several different uh, star groups, galactic uh, being groups that do have um, blue energy, blue skin, um, and are very similar in a lot of the work that they do. So you definitely have a lot of that energy about you. He's saying this is not the sole reason why he's worked with you lately. He is interested in helping you expand your spiritual practice, your meditation. He's saying your inner sanct sanctum. And uh, he, it's a pleasure for him to work with you on this, um, on this path that you are going down. And he is showing me um, Archangel Michael right next to him and uh, El Moira also right next to him. And they're um, kind of all like putting arms around each other. They're all brothers. They all work together. They're all on the same team. And they all love you very much, Sheila. And they each in their own way have uh, been working with you. Or, our, or are preparing to work with you and have started that connection. Um, it's interesting, he's, he's saying, thank you, Sheila, for asking that question. Um, but when he said that they are brothers, it's really interesting because when I was in my meditation earlier today, um, I wanted to call Lord Shiva brother. And I'm like, oh, you are my brother. And he's he was just fine with it. He was happy with it. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm not calling Lord Shiva my brother. Like what? And then um, actually um, Jesus came in into my meditation and I called Jesus my big bro because that's who I go to when I need guidance and support. And um, so then I got that connection and both of them were also kind of like putting their arms around each other. Um, just signifying that they are they're all together and they're they're there to support us and um, uh, he was totally cool with me calling him brother <laughs> so that's kind of fun um, so yeah I hope that resonates with you Sheila uh, Sheena is asking can I have some guidance or message from Lord Shiva I have grown up with his spirituality hmm <laughs> and he's saying yes dear child um, and he's showing you Sheena as a young girl um, with like 
little pigtails and um, you're just like really smiley and happy and he's picking you up and he's like holding you like on his hip like you would you know like your little sister or brother um, just or a little toddler you would like pick up and carry around he's holding you like that and he's saying he um, has been working with you for much of this life experience that you have and he is so proud of the life that you have designed and he is so uh, excited to be uh, helping you move forward in uh, the designing of your life as you so choose uh, for your future. He's saying uh, your life is very full of love and light and happiness and uh, joy. And this is all that he could wish for anyone and uh, he is just very deeply honored to be working with you. And I'm asking now if he has any message for you for 2020. Let's just kind of ask that. He's saying, uh, remember to um, always have gratitude or to uh, practice gratitude um, for the joy, the love, the light that you have in your life. Um, as this is going to help um, in the designing and the building of uh, your future. And he's saying shifting into this space of gratitude um, will attract much more than what you are already grateful for. And he's just like, um, uh, like clapping his hands like this. And he's got like a twinkle in his eye, Sheena, and he's just like really excited for you. And so I'm taking that as a pretty good sign. Um, and he's now saying, yes, this is good uh, for your 20, the rest of your year. Um, definitely focus in on gratitude and that frequency and um, have no worries. So I hope that resonates, uh, Sheena. That was pretty cool. Um, okay, let's see here. I do see, um, okay, how, I just see Facebook users, so I'm gonna ask the question, but I do apologize. I don't see the name, um, and let me see if I can pull it up on my phone. But the question is, could Shiva please give me some guidance around my career? I've been having a tough time manifesting success. He's saying, yes, uh, there has been a lot of struggle and um, he is applauding that your strength, like you've been holding it together pretty well. And um, he's saying, hand off fear, hand off any worries uh, that you may have around your career. And he's, he's pointing to your heart chakra. He wants you to go within and imagine your heart chakra as he's showing like a flashlight or like a spotlight. And your heart chakra is going to brighten or light up the path for you. And uh, he really wants you to pay attention to your heart chakra. What makes you excited? Um, what makes you really uh, passionate? And I know this is a hard climate to, you know, maybe have some troubles in your career and also really want to have that passion and have that uh, light and have that uh, excitement enough to in, in a, a job or in your career that can support you and um, provide a really stable and comfortable uh, life for yourself. But he's saying wherever your heart chakra lights up, there's always an opportunity and there's always a means of designing and building a career and um, really uh, flying. He's showing like birds like or like it's actually kind of cool. It's like humans. Uh, you're standing on like a cliff and then you're jumping, but you're turning into a bird and you're just flying. And so he, he wants you to really focus in on your heart chakra and see where does your heart chakra light up when you maybe have a few opportunities, maybe like 
door one, two, three, you know, that kind of, uh, which door are you going to choose? Kind of, uh, I guess it's a game show. Um, but when you have those opportunities lined up or you're thinking about maybe a career change um, or you're trying to find a really good job that will be in, li in alignment with you um, and you have a few opportunities there, what is your heart chakra really lighting up on when you, when you weigh those opportunities? And he's saying, always trust your heart chakra. If maybe on the outside, he's showing like on the surface, it may seem um, not the most opportune path or the most um, advantageous choice, but there are benefits and other things that really make it um, a really positive choice and one that will fit your life and how you want it to be balanced. So um, he's saying, always go with your heart chakra. So I hope that resonates for you. I'm sorry I didn't get your name, but I feel like that can also apply to a lot of other people uh, at this time. There's a lot of uh, changing going on or change happening. So even if um, that wasn't your question and if that really resonates with you, listen to your heart chakra and see what really gets you excited, like what kind of... Um, makes you um, feel that expansiveness, that energy, or maybe a fluttering in your heart, uh, your chest, like you're really excited and you can't wait to try something or do something. Um, listen to that because that's where you want to be. Um, and that's how you want to move forward. Uh, okay, so there's another question here. I would like to know if there is any guidance or message for me from Lord Shiva. And um, I do apologize again, I didn't get that person's name, um, but let's see if there's anything that comes forward. Um, I'm getting that there is a need to just keep your head up. Uh, he actually like made my chin kind of move up. So keep your head up, be proud and shine your light brightly. And um, just hold that space, hold that inner peace, hold that inner space and that inner light and know that um, there are a lot of people around that are paying attention and they're seeing you and they're recognizing your work, they're recognizing um, your energy and your space and, and how you move through the world. And um, he's just pointing back down to the heart chakra, lead with your heart chakra. So I really hope that resonates for you. Uh, Rita is asking, does Lord Shiva have any guide, advice on my life direction? He's saying, oh yes, Rita. Um, he's showing that there are many paths um, kind of available for you, Rita, but the one that you are on, the direction that you have chosen, that you're moving down at this time, that is the one that is going to uh, lead you to some really amazing, he's saying amazing places, places that you would never have guessed that you could have gotten to. Uh, just, he's showing like just a bliss um, and you're just having a really amazing time and uh, there are going to be moments where you're just like, oh my gosh, pinch myself because or somebody pinched me because I'm like so happy right now. And this is so awesome. Uh, so he's saying you're on the right path and that uh, moving forward, um, there are going to be some really amazing moments and um, keep doing all the work that you're doing. Keep shining your light, he is saying. And he's also saying uh, maintain that uh, energy that uh, that makes you. He's not saying make you makes you shine, but it's more like makes you thrive. Um, you're right now holding a pretty good energy, and to keep keep holding that, keep moving forward with that. So I hope that resonates, Rita. Um, uh, here's a good question. I'm sorry, I don't see the name, but any suggestion on how I could get in a meditative state better? Um, Lord Shiva is saying, 
all you need to do is allow. There is no need to strain to maintain or get to a better meditative state, allowing yourself to just release, to let go of, um, to sink into. He's kind of showing like, just like you're, um, you're kind of like trying to keep maintain your posture and make it like really nice and hold it really well. And it's a little uncomfortable, but you're like really straining to hold it. He's saying, just sink into the nice warm water of um, that meditative state. Just kind of let go and you're going to fall into it. You're really close to just being able to just get there very quickly. And so, um, and he's saying this goes for many, not just this one individual, but for many, um, they're practicing, there is practice happening, but um, there's no need to control the process. Just allow it to happen. And if maybe a thought comes in or you can't quiet your mind in the way that you wish, um, just ask for a little assistance and or he is saying, just remember to focus in on your breath, Keep, maintain a focus and um, just allow it to, to kind of slowly come back. And there's no need to, to control it. Um, he's saying it's just more of a matter of slipping in and just relaxing and letting go. So I hope that resonates with you and I hope that resonates with other people. I definitely um, feel like I could improve the way I meditate. And that's, for me, that really hit home. So thank you so much, Lord Shiva. Uh, Des is asking, could Lord Shiva give me advice on my career? He's saying, um, Des, to step back and um, kind of bring about more balance. He's make, kind of making me feel like your career, your work might be a little bit demanding um, or it's gonna, it's kind of a driving force for a lot of what you have to do and where you spend a lot of energy. And so he's, he's recommending that you step back a little bit and try and bring in more balance. Um, and that may be um, if you're not able to work from home now, um, maybe in the future designing or getting into a spot where you can maybe work from home a little bit or, and then work in the office or work at your location um, oh, for some time during the week, getting a little bit of a distance, kind of bringing in, bringing in that balance is going to be key for you for the longevity, for, for the future, not just in the present state, but for your health and well-being and the balance that you're going to need down the road. So I hope that resonates for you. He's really just uh, making me feel like you need to step back and relax a little bit on it and uh, bring about more stuff that makes you feel uh, just calm and relaxed. And uh, that way, when you go into your workspace, or into, um, you know, where, wherever you're working, um, it's okay, we're here to work, um, but it's not like driving you. It's not your identity. It's not who you are. It's just what you're doing right now. And um, it's more of a balance. So I hope, I really hope that resonates. That's, he's really making me feel like that though. Uh, Pranita is asking, can you please let me know who my guides are and about my star family? Thank you so much. Okay, so Pranita, uh, Lord Shiva is um, kind of stepping off to the side a little bit and your guardian angels are stepping forward. Getting your male guardian angel is the first to step forward. I'm asking him now what his name is. His energy is really interesting. Um, it, it feels really calming. 
um, but kind of like um, like a protector warrior almost type feeling. Um, I'm asking what his name is. I'm getting like bell on, like some sort like bell on. He said it like three times. So I'm going to say bell on is his name. And um, yeah, he's, he's kind of showing me as like a very tall, very um, like aware person, aware angel that's kind of like monitoring your, uh, um, your environment and providing support where you need it. But your female guardian angel stepping forward and um, she's much softer in her energy. I'm asking her to come in a little closer because it's a little softer for me. And I'm getting Melanie. Melanie. So I hope that uh, resonates for you. Those are your two guardian angels. And you do have a full team as well. Um, and then your star family. Let's see. Pleiadian. And I'm getting Andromedan. And some uh, several Orions as well. So that's pretty cool. I hope that uh, resonates for you and I uh, hope you can connect with them. That's They're all some pretty cool energy right there. Um, so yeah, awesome. Uh, Terry Lynn, I would love some guidance about my guides. Okay. Terry Lynn, Lord Shiva stepping forward and he's saying, you should ask your guides for more help. You have an amazing team and many more than maybe you would realize. And um, your uh, female guardian angel stepping forward and she is saying that she is right there with you, Terry Lynn. Please ask her to come in. And she's really putting a lot of pressure uh, energy on my heart chakra. And she wants you to feel her because she is right there supporting you. And she's ready to really work with you very closely. Um, I'm asking her name. She's telling me Angelica is her name. That's so cool. And she gave me a picture of Angelica Houston. I don't know if you guys know who that is, but she's amazing. And I love her. She's a beautiful, amazing actress. And that's kind of what she looks like. <laughs> so Terry Lynn, uh, there's your guardian, female guardian angel's name. And Lord Shiva says, please ask them for more help and work with them more. Um, Marie is asking for a message from Lord Shiva. Ooh, Marie, this is pretty cool. Um, he's putting a lot of pressure right now in my third eye and on my left eye. And I don't know if you are maybe experiencing some energy in this side um, or on your the left side of you or in your left eye or if there's anything going on with your left eye. But he's putting a lot of energy on it and it feels kind of like my eye is drying out a bit. <laughs> And that's that's very uh, different, uh, really, really uh, different than what I've experienced before. But he's saying that there's a lot of energy over here because they want you to pay attention to this uh, side of your face and your eye. And um, he's pointing to your third eye now. And he is removing a lot of um, energy from it and helping you expand more. So that's really awesome. And I'm asking him now if he has any message for her, for you. Saying continue the work. You have picked up the, he's showing me a paintbrush. He's saying you have picked up the paintbrush, continue to paint your reality. That is super cool. So I hope that resonates, Murray. He's stepping back on that now. <laughs> And he's just smiling. <laughs> uh, Lotta, I love your artwork, Ashley. Oh, thank you. 
This, you guys, if you're interested, removable wallpaper on Etsy. There are so many different options you can choose. It's amazing. I bought it just recently on Etsy and it's so beautiful and I love it. I did preserve and keep the old background, which was also removable wallpaper. And so I may eventually have them, have them both set up in my studio space so I can like move my camera around and do different videos and stuff. But for now, I just have this one up and I love it so much. Um, okay. Let's see here. I'm seeing lots of questions. Huh, Sheena's saying like Deepak Chopra's voice for Lord Shiva. Um, I'm not getting a really good sense of what his voice is. I haven't listened to him a lot, to be honest, so I can't say yes or no. Um, Shiva's just saying uh, kind of deeper, smoother than his voice. So I'm going to go with what he says. <laughs> Um, okay, so Dorada is asking, do you have any messages for me? Can you help me with meditation? And he's saying, uh, yes, dear one, yes. I would love to help you with your meditation practice. And oh, this is so cool, you guys. He's showing um, him sitting in like this really beautiful, like sunny, yet ethereal plane and i see tons of people who are asking for his assistance in meditation or wanting to connect with his energy also sitting in this plane of energy or in this uh, ethereal plane field and um, you can go there at any time he is saying Please um, make an intention if you wish to see it in your dreams or if you wish to go there in your meditation. Um, he holds a serene space um, where anyone can join and uh, relax. And he's um, at like the head of a class, but he's more in the center of a big circle. And there's like rows uh, in big circles all around him, uh, like millions of people or beings, not just humans, but other beings as well, sitting in quiet contemplation and meditation. And um, it's just like so relaxing. I'm kind of like feeling that energy right now. Um, so if you wish to go there, Dorada or anyone else, definitely uh, feel free to. And he's saying that that takes place at all present moments or all in all present moments so in this moment he is there right now holding that space and you can always go there uh so a message for dorada please saying dear one he's like kind of like cupping your chin uh, putting his hand on your face saying uh you are so precious and uh you are a lovely being and uh, you are just so full of light and love and um, you shine very brightly and he's very pleased um, to know you and to be near you and support you. And uh, if you choose to move forward as a light worker and to share your uh, voice with others, um, it would be his honor to help you do that and to help you step forward in whichever way that you're called. And he's just saying, he's just bowing to you, Dorada. So that's really beautiful. That's all he's saying. He's stepping back now, but that's amazing. Um, and I'm really happy for you. Uh, okay, so, oh, someone said, I'm so relaxed right now and feel his presence. I'm like, whew, really relaxed too. <laughs> he feels so good. Um, David, uh, oh, thanks. He also likes the background. Uh, he says, I'd like to ask Shiva about my Native American roots and ancestors. I feel deeply drawn to their music and chants. Thanks. He's saying, please uh, follow through with that guidance, uh, David. Because you are resonating with those chants, you're resonating with that music, and you're resonating with that culture, embrace it, research it. He's saying immerse yourself in the vibrations of that um, 
that uh, energy that has been captured um, through music, through stories, through culture, cultural um, gifts such as the um, beautiful artwork, beadwork, um, the amazing places you can go and visit, the landscapes, you can go and experience um, just the nature in which they live and lived in past um, past empires of amazing uh, of group histories. He's showing me like Arizona and New Mexico, and the um, the Hopi Indians had the amazing um, uh, houses like carved into the rock. I, I'm totally blanking on uh, where that's at, but he keeps showing me those pictures of uh, the, the houses in the rocks. So definitely look that up. Um, it's just really beautiful. And he's saying, you're resonating with this music as well because this is going to help you in your frequency and it's going to help with the healing uh, that you are working on. And it is also going to help in reminding you of who you are and who you have been and the knowledge and the uh, strength in which you possess. So that's a lot uh, to take in, David, but he's really urging you to go and uh, he's saying research, listen to the music, read, um, immerse yourself as much as you can because that is what you need at this time. So that's pretty awesome. I hope that resonates with you. Uh, thank you guys. Yeah, a lot of people are feeling really hot feeling his energy, definitely feeling the calmness that he has. Uh, Lisa is asking, what advice does Lord Shiva have for people who find it difficult to meditate? Yeah, that's great. That's a good question. He is saying, um, if you have attempted meditation before and it has not been successful, try a different means of meditation. There are many forms. There are many ways to um, quiet your mind. There are many ways to sit and be relaxed or be moving and relaxed and allow your mind to step aside. It does not mean that you cannot meditate because each of us all of us need to and can and ultimately it's up to us to figure out how it works for us how can we find a way to get there to that that inner peace that quiet space um, that is within each of us He's saying you can um, try many methods but always uh, be in a state of allowing if say something does not uh, resonate or you feel like you're not successful in meditation, allow yourself to fail and move forward. Now you know that maybe that style or that um, particular means of meditation, maybe it's just the, he's showing like, maybe it's just the time of day that you've tried to meditate before and that doesn't work for you. The method might be, uh, um, he's saying, amenable um, to you but um, maybe the time of day or that space that you were in at that time um, just wasn't the, the proper time for you in your body and your mind. So he's saying, um, he's, he's continuing to say, just be flexible, allow yourself to fail, allow yourself to ease into it, allow yourself to be curious and to continue to try. Because um, if you are feeling this, um, guidance, this, this need to go into meditation, you need to meditate. So it's up to you. Um, you can ask your guides. You can ask for help. He's, he's kind of moving his arms and his hands out like there's so many people around here and around each of us to turn to for guidance. Um, so please do so and know that you will reach that point where you will be able to meditate in the best form that works for you. And then once you find that form, he's saying, continue to try other means because now you know what works for you. You can build on it. You can push yourself and you can get to a place where it may look like a more traditional meditation. You can get to a longer um, session 
You can get to a space where you don't fall asleep every time. You can get to a space where you are really in that stillness for, um, it may be brief, but the pure stillness for any time is always going to be beneficial for us. So continue to try. And he's saying, do not give up. This is essential and all of you can do it. It's just a matter of how you do it and being willing to try different means. So I think that's really his advice for um, you, Lisa, and for Ed, anyone else who has uh, problems with meditation. I personally also haven't really found yet. I do a lot of different types of meditations or I've tried a lot of different ones and I try to, I, I sit in a stillness um, every day, um, but it's not, I feel my style yet. So I'm going to continue to try and find different ways that really light me up and make me really decompress and feel very relaxed and get to that inner space. Um, so, you know, it's just a matter of, of practice and trying things out. So uh, thank you, Lisa, for a great question. Um, okay, here we have a few questions for, I'm, I do apologize, Facebook user. Um, does he have a message for me in 2020? And I'm going to ask him, is there anything um, that he wants to say in addition to what he said earlier about the rest of 2020 for the group and for this particular person? Um, be in the mindset, and this is for you, uh, dear one. He's saying, please be in the mindset that 2020 is a time of change. When you are in that change mindset and you recognize that, you will be like the bamboo in the wind. You can go with the wind. You can bend all the way to the side and you will not break. And you will not break, dear one, in 2020 or in 2021 or in 2022 or moving forward into the future for you. Being in that change mindset is going to be your means of going with the flow, basically, going with the wind. And uh, he wants you to know that you are as strong as the strongest He's really into like the visuals tonight. This is great. Um, but he's showing like a bamboo grove. Um, and it's just all this bamboo, like all together, you know, it's all together. It's t a growing tightly together. They're not going to, any of them are going to break from the wind because they have the strength of not only their own self, but the selves of all the bamboo around them. And, um, you are definitely well supported and you are not going to break and you will be flexible and be able to move forward um, in the changes to come. And he's saying, and this applies to everyone else that's watching or resonates with that question. And if this really speaks to you, remember it. You are uh, well supported and you will be flexible and, and stay in that change mindset and you're going to be able to go with the flow. So I hope that resonates for everyone, <laughs> whoever um, needed that. And um, we have another question here. Does he have a message for me regarding my work going forward? Um, on the work, he's like circling the work. There may be quite a few changes. Um, and he's pointing back to the last question. And I really feel like that re that he's saying that this um, applies to this question as well. Being in that change mindset is going to set you up for success in your work life. Be flexible and be willing to change if you need to. And he's underscoring that if you need to um, be prepared to, to flex your styles and uh, be, be prepared for the change. He's saying this is going to be a good thing for you. So do not worry at all. And he's highlighting in that change mindset, there is no need to have um, 
any type of fear or worry or stress about the change because change is always going to happen. We are in a constant state of change. We might not recognize it, um, but we are always changing. We are always evolving. Something is always moving um, uh, around. So it's, it's just a matter of recognizing that change is um, something that keeps you moving forward and uh, going with the flow of it. Um, there is no space for fear in that change mindset. So do not build that in. Do not allow that to take hold because once you, once you allow fear, you're, you're um, embracing fear or allowing it to hang out, that is going to get you out of the change mindset and into this um, kind of frozen space where you um, feel frozen and you can't react or make decisions um, for fear of what the change will be. Uh, so change and fear do not, uh, they're like oil and water. They do not mix. So uh, keep that in mind as you guys move forward, which that's the oil and water thing really visualizes it for me um, totally. So I hope that resonates for you guys. Uh, Marie is saying, um, I'd like help with my meditation practice from Lord Shiva and any guidance he might have. Oh, I think we already um, answered some of your questions, Marie. And he's saying, please definitely call me in for your meditation. Um, Jamie, does Lord Shiva have a message for me in regards to my spiritual path? He's saying you are well on the road, Jamie. You are exactly where you need to be at this time. And he's, he's smiling and he's saying he knows that uh, you uh, wish to be further along, but there are new lessons um, to be presented to you and new things to incorporate into your practice. And they're going to be very exciting and keep things fresh. He's saying it's, this is going to feel uh, similar, but yet um, brand new moving forward um, and you're going to have a really strong foundation and be able to branch out and experience a lot of different things, but really know what your path is and how you can move forward. And um, in, in your foundation, um, you are strong. So I hope that resonates with you. I hope that really paints a clear picture for you. I'm not sure 100% what any of that means, but <laughs> I hope uh, that that answers your question. Um, Paul, have I incarnated with Lord Shiva? Saying yes. Uh, we have worked together in many of your lifetimes. And um, as well as when you are on the other side of the veil, your higher self, your whole self uh, has worked with Lord Shiva before as well. So he's just uh, kind of giving me the thumbs up on that. Cool. Um, Vuyo, is there any guidance for me this evening? Um, he's putting a lot of energy in my feet, Fuyo, and he's making me feel like um, you need to go out um, and get outside into nature and connect with the nature around you and um, turn to nature for guidance in uh, your path ahead. You may have questions or may not um, be sure in which direction to go, but you have so much support and love around you. And he's showing me a lot of like fairy energy, fey elemental energy around you as well. And they're like showing up kind of like floating Christmas lights and they're, they're just so beautiful and they want uh, to connect with you. So he's saying that um, there are a lot of resources for you uh, but he's making me feel like my feet are sitting in grass. Like he wants you to get out into maybe a park if you can, um, or a little garden space if you can, and connect with the earth um, while you're connecting with the fairies and elementals. There are two 
different types of um, uh, beings there. And, and that's what he's tasking you to do. <laughs> so I hope that resonates for you. Um, okay, let's see. Ooh, okay, guys. I'm going to make sure I keep going here. I do apologize if I end up skipping anyone. I am um, trying to make sure I get to everyone here. And we're doing okay on some time. Um, Tenzin is asking, um, is there any guidance for her? And she says she thinks she saw your third eye in the sky today close to the sun. He's saying, um, dearest one, uh, that was intentional. He wanted to connect with you and uh, you are, you definitely saw what you needed to see in that moment. And he is uh, just uh, really excited and proud of the work that you've been doing on your light worker path and the energies that are around you. Um, there are many, many, many energies around you. They're very proud and excited as well. And uh, he's just one that kind of comes in and, and has uh, kept an eye on you a bit. Um, and he wants you to connect with him more. So call him in more if you, if you resonate with him. And he's saying that is all you need at this time. And he's just smiling. So, um, yeah, hope that resonates, Tenzin. <laughs> uh, Angie is saying, thank you. I meditate in the bathtub. So relaxing in the water was spot on. Awesome. Yeah, just like, whoo, shifting in. Um, uh, okay. Um, I'm getting a question here. Dear Lord Shiva, am I meditating right or long enough? He's saying, dearest one, just allow. Um, do not concern yourself with length of time or if you are meditating right or correctly. And he's doing this as well. Um, just allow. Um, allow your energy to guide uh, how long you sit in that space. Um, some days it may be a few minutes, some days, and maybe an hour or more. Um, wherever you're at in that space, just allow it to be and let that be your guide. If you wish to hit a certain number of minutes, um, you can always uh, you know, aim for a set amount of time each day and you can grow your practice. So maybe add on another five minutes every day to get up to Maybe you want to be meditating for a full hour by, you know, a certain number of uh, days or weeks. You can work up to that by adding a little bit each day. He's saying just allow and um, listen to how your body is feeling. So I hope that resonates for you. That definitely, I needed that reminder as well. Because <laughs> um, I always think, oh, I don't think I'm doing this long enough. But it's not really about the amount of time. It's about where you at and how how you need it. Uh, Ursula, could Lord Shiva explain why it is that only certain light workers are given information and activations which which they then sell for large sums of money so that only the wealthy can access them? Why not activate activate every light worker so that all can get the activations they need? I am especially asking about Lord Shiva's chakra activations, which are only available if you have almost $500 to spend. Hmm. He is saying that um, the knowledge is available for any who choose to pursue it. There are some who have attained that knowledge and have um, decided to help others learn that knowledge um, in a way that maybe is, um, he's saying maybe is quite expensive. Um, there is always a balance. Um, a light worker who is guided by um, their intent, good intentions will always take into consideration their own energy 
So there is a necessary, um, you know, price that must be set to honor their energy and helping others learn um, and grow. But he's also saying at the same time, there may be some who are pushing the limits and adding on extra um, or may not have good intentions um, and are just in it to make a lot of money and maybe not help a lot of people um, in the way that needs to be done. Uh, if that particular teacher or path or person does not resonate with you, if the price does not feel right to you, um, feel free to look around for others who may also provide that service. Um, and or uh, there are means of going within and he's saying you can ask me to come in and work with you. There are many texts, texts. So um, scrolls, he's showing scrolls, books, documents um, that you can also do research through to learn more about um, your chakras, learn more about Lord Shiva, and you can develop your own practice or your own style. Um, the knowledge is widely given, and it's just a matter of uh, moving forward, certain light workers, certain people are called to teach and their um, prices um, are typically set to resonate with their energy and the material. Um, but there may be some, like he said before, who are not pricing appropriately. <laughs> so always go and I recommend this for anyone looking for any sort of teaching, um, go within and ask, does this person resonate with me or does this company uh, really resonate with the material? Are they for my highest good? Are they going to really benefit me? Are they gonna help me? Um, and some people, you know, may feel really great um, and that's awesome, go for it. Some people or companies or certain uh, classes or practices may not feel the greatest to you, so don't go for it. Um, it's just all a matter of um, your uh, preference or abilities, um, but definitely always ask, how can I bring in the abundance necessary to move forward on my journey? Um, because that's also something that can take care of that problem for you, Ursula. Um, maybe you can ask or try if this is like the one course that you need or you feel it resonates with you and you don't know how to make up that money or you don't know how to get into it, ask for help with it and see what comes forward. So there's, there's a lot of different ways to go about it, but I appreciate the way Lord Shiva um, highlights that um, there are other ways of learning the material. So yeah, I hope you guys, I hope that resonates for a lot of you and for you, Ursula, definitely. Um, honey, a few days back while meditating, I experienced something, uh, unwilled smile followed by heaviness, sadness, reached my heart zone. I ended up losing control over my body. I was shaking and crying for no reason. May I ask Lord Shiva what? was that or who was that? And also I wanna ask if Lord Shiva has any message for me. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so Lord Shiva is saying it was not a different separate being. It was a lot of energy that was stepping forward from within. It was things that you needed to release. And so maybe you had that smile at first and then it just like kind of needed to be let go of. And sometimes when that hap happens, um, it can really impact our body and uh, really feel um, different for a little bit. And then we, it's released and it's gone. Um, so that's what he's showing me. Um, so I hope that resonates for you. Just continue to just say, please transmute this. Um, he's also calling out if you're worried about um, other beings or uh, energy stepping forward in a way that you're not prepared for, always set boundaries. Set your boundaries on what you're 
comfortable uh, interacting with when you're in specific spaces. Say when you're meditating, um, you have a specific type of boundary set for your team to follow and um, you know set in place. And then you can just move forward and not have to worry about anything. But just set it and forget it. Don't don't really worry about much um, in the in the way of lower vibrational energies or energy stepping forward that are maybe inappropriate or didn't make you feel good. So he's just, he's focusing in inward on that there was some things coming up for you and it just needed to get out and be released. Um, okay, so Marie, I hope that resonates for you, um, uh, honey, for sure. I really hope that resonates. Uh, Marie feeling slight pressure on her left side. Oh, that's cool. And you painted today. So that makes sense of why he said like, keep painting. Oh my gosh, that's brilliant. Um, okay. I, um, I've gone over a little bit of time here, but I'm gonna take a few more questions. Um, let's see. Can Lord Shiva heal? That's a good question. Can he participate in healing or help with healing? He's saying yes. He can. Um, and he's showing, oh, this is cool. He's showing um, stepping forward with others, like other ascended masters and angels and, um, and helping in, he's particularly showing me in my mind's eye, uh, me doing angelic Reiki and him stepping forward to participate in that. Um, and he's really coming in around the meditation, that uh, setting of the, the sacred quiet sanctuary within us really helps and facilitates that healing process that you may need. Um, so there's that element. It's kind of allowing for uh, that work to be done within that space. And he's saying that this is um, definitely a, an element of healing and a form of healing in and of itself. And it allows for other healings to take place. So in that way, he can. And he has contributed to um, healing energy for others. And he works with a lot of a lot of different beings. So it's pretty awesome. Thanks for that question. Um, all right. I'm going to look for... Wow, that's so awesome. Wow, you guys are really connecting with his energy. That is so beautiful. Okay, final question here is for Amy. And she says, does Lord Shiva have any message for me? I'm feeling a little stuck. And I, this really uh, jumped out at me, that last word, the last sentence, I'm feeling a little stuck, uh, really caught my eye. And I think that's um, uh, where Lord Shiva wants to focus. And he's saying, all of our experiences, everything that we are experiencing day in, day out, is energy. And if you're feeling a little stuck, uh, if you're feeling stagnant, you can call in new energy, you can get rid of old energy, and you can align yourself, align your bodies, your physical, mental, spiritual, emotional body together to allow that energy to flow, allow your life force to expand, and allow that energy to move in really, he's saying magical ways. Um, who, excuse me if I sneeze, I'm feeling a lot of energy in my nose right now. <laughs> um, so he's saying, if you're feeling a little stuck, and this is for Amy, and he's also saying this is for anyone else who's also feeling a little stuck, um, try doing a few simple things. Try um, removing that which no longer serves you. So if you have a lot of clutter, or if you just have a lot of things that you have to do in your schedule, if you have a lot of just things that are filling up your time or taking your focus, your energy, 
um, away from other things that you want to do, give those away. Cancel those appointments or remove yourself from those classes that are like extracurricular activities. Like he's just saying, step back a little bit and get back to um, a more calm. And he's also saying it may be a little boring, uh, more calm, quiet space. Um, and then you can work on calling in new energy. You can work on imagining your new life or maybe your new space. Maybe you got rid of a lot of old things. Imagine what it would look like when it's rearranged in a different way. Rearrange your house. Um, open all the windows and do a big dusting and, and uh, really shake up the energy of your space your body, go out and exercise, your mind, you can read books, you can um, really be intentional about where you're putting your focus and your intention. And if there's anything that feels like it's a have to or like it's just excess, like it's not really benefiting you or it's not bringing you joy, get rid of it quit it. Um, just say, okay, I'm going to focus on something else for a little bit and see if, if that makes me feel better. Um, but he's also saying on that, a caveat, if you get rid of things or if you um, uh, quit or cancel appointments or cancel subscriptions or cancel things that you're doing, don't run out and try and replace it with something else. Just allow yourself to sit in the stillness, allow yourself to be bored, allow yourself to be in a calm space, and then see what comes out of that, how you can move forward without replacing things um, or, you know, maybe rearranging things, as you said before, rearranging your house. Um, these are small, little, simple things to kind of get you started in building bigger change within your life. He's saying um, energy is everything. So um, if you wish to bring about more energy, more fresh energy, you have to create the space, set the intention for that and be very clear in your intention. He's saying, I think he's, he's saying that this is a, a good starting point. He doesn't want to go too much in, but um, he's definitely feeling like, Amy, that's a good place for you to start. Look around you and see what can you change in a simple way um, and, and then keep going. Do as much as you can in one day and uh, then just try a little bit the next and keep, keep building on that. And it's going to change and shift. It's going to shift from maybe your environment to inside or from inside to your environment. You can do things in different manners, but um, he's, he's wanting you to just take little steps at a time and that's gonna make you uh, free yourself and have you flowing um, more freely again in your energy. So I hope that resonates for you. Uh, Tenzin is saying he said his third eye was to remind or connect today's live with you, Ashley. Oh, that's great. Um, okay, okay, really this is the final question. I just saw this. I know she was really trying to reach out. Nisha, she asked, can I get a question asked about my dream? I've dreamt Lord Shiva was my dad and we were in a battle. I've also dreamt my divine counterpart as Lord Shiva. Where is the message in these? Is there a general message for me? Thank you. Hmm, okay. He's saying he is not in um, opposition to you, Nisha. There are many dreams occurring at this time where the energy is just inundating our physical bodies and really uh, influencing our ego, our, our mind. And, um, and in these dreams, they may seem very outlandish and different or may seem very uh important but uh he's highlighting that sometimes it's just a dream and to let do not let this hinder you from reaching out to him um he's not 
a father figure to you. There is no battle against you two. He is very much um, behind you, supporting you and sending you a lot of love and light. Um, so he's just saying, don't worry about the dreams. That That's just a result of a lot of energy. And um, he's highlighting that um, you may be experiencing a lot of ascension symptoms and it may be a, a great time for you to get out and ground, um, drink a lot of water and just get a lot of rest and take care of yourself when you when you feel like you need to take a nap or step back a little bit, make sure you're doing that because he's making me feel like you're very um, fatigued or um, you can be mentally fatigued and you just need to take a break and um, just do that when you feel like you need it. And okay, he's saying um, it's time for me to step back. I'm getting a little tired. I went over a little bit, but you guys, thank you so much for so many amazing questions. And thank you to Lord Shiva for coming in. Um, this has been really great. Um, he is highlighting um, and I should have totally um, brought this forward earlier, but I have a group healing coming up, Angelic Reiki group healing on May 10th at 11 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. It's $25 a person, and I'm definitely going to be calling on Lord Shiva to join me um, now that I know that he's interested in partaking in that work. So um, I'm definitely going to have him on deck for me because that's going to be awesome. And so, yeah, it's $25. I have it in a private group setting. And a lot of you that are here have had that experience already. It's going to be very similar. Um, and it's just going to be in a really amazing way to release and to heal and uh, to just get a lot of relaxation and kind of help shift your energy into a space um, where you're you're able to get more comfortable or move forward. So I hope that resonates with you guys. Thank you all so much for your time and your questions and your attention. And I'm sending you all a lot of love and light. And um, definitely there's more to come on Channeling with Love, my Facebook group where you guys are at right now. Uh, next week, we're going to be channeling El Moira. So that's going to be pretty fantastic. And I'm excited. Uh, okay. Talk to you later, guys. Bye. <laughs>